Hey guys, welcome to Saturday Spotlight. Uh, on the bench today, as usual, one of my past builds. Uh, it is the Lindbergh uh, 1967 Olds Cutlass 442. Uh, this one's near and dear to me because I had a in high school I had a car uh, that looked just like this. Uh, only mine was not the 442. Uh, mine was just the uh, standard uh, Cutlass S. Uh, so uh, we're going to take a look at this one today. Uh, just kind of go over it here real quick. Probably not take up a whole lot of time again, uh, but just want to show you this, guys. Uh, one of my favorite kits, uh, as it does uh, represent uh, one of my uh, cars that I had in high school. Uh, but first, I'm going to slide this back, and I've actually still got uh, the original box, uh, which there's a little interesting note on this box. I don't know if you guys have ever noticed it before, but this is the kit it's from. Uh, if I can get that all in there. Uh, I'm going to have to adjust that camera, guys, so you guys can see that. Let me slide this up just a little bit. There we go. Uh, so this is the box, uh, Lindbergh from 2016, I believe is what the box says on the bottom there. 2016, uh, 67 Olds, 442, uh, Cutlass Supreme. But check that out, guys. Look at the spelling. C-U-T-L-E-S-S. -S. Uh, interesting. As we all know, that was a Cutlass L A S S C U T L A S S should be on there, uh, Supreme. But anyway, nonetheless, uh, very, very nice box art on there. Uh, now AMT had a 66, uh, cutlass and the biggest difference on there that I know of anyway, is the turn signals here in the 66 were down here in the bumper. Uh, the 67, they moved them to between the headlights there. Uh, I always kind of like this look right here. Uh, I, Maybe it's because I'm partial because I had one, but uh, just, just like that look anyways on the front. Uh, so we'll just kind of go around the box here real fast. Uh, there's a nice picture of the interior. Check that out. Hearst, probably a Hearst white ball shifter there. Uh, bucket seats console. And then we'll see how I did did mine here. Not much different than the box art here, uh, except different color. Uh, but yeah, anyways, there's just a, a picture. like the color they have on that build-up version there. And again, just the box art. Not a whole lot special on the on the box. Uh, just shows a detailed picture of the engine there, the actual actual kit engine. And then just showed some of the features it had here: uh, four barrel carb, four speed transmission, a dual exhaust. That actually is what depicted the four the four four two. So see how these are broke up. So this is not a four forty two. It's a four four two representing each one of those things there. Uh, it's got W thirty package. Features chrome fan shroud, uh, air cleaner ducts, and chrome valve covers. Uh, detailed chassis with complete suspension, detailed interior and vinyl tires. And guys, for the most part, from what I remember, and we'll look at the date on here real quick. I think I've seen it down here. Uh, yeah, right there, 2016. 2016 round two, LLC. So, uh, what I found out and what I remember... Guys, this car actually goes together really nice. It is a very nice kit. Now, I looked on scale mates uh, before I started the video here, and I could not find any origination date on this, unless I just didn't type in the right thing, but I typed in Lindbergh, 67 Cutlass, uh, AMT, MPC, all that stuff to see if it started life as something else. So I don't think... I don't think this was a brand new mold. Now it could be. I could be totally wrong on that. Uh, so I probably shouldn't speculate on that. But I just really couldn't find a kit history. I did come across a 66, but uh, which was listed as an all-new tool. But again, I uh, found nothing on the 67. So uh, if you guys know, uh, just leave in the comments. Let me know maybe when this kit originated. Uh, and uh, and then uh, uh, learn something there too. So, But anyway, all right, enough of the box. We'll get the real deal in here. Slide this back up. And uh, again, I, I did this just to depict uh, the car that I had. I have trouble with this front wheel sometimes coming off, guys. I need to actually put a spot of glue on it. But uh, uh, Now, I don't know if this is the exact, if this is the exact color that mine was. But what I did is I went to paint store and uh, looked through their chips. And I actually, I did some looking before I went there, too. Look through and come up with something that's really, really close. If it's not exactly, guys, it's really, really close uh, to what I had on mine. Uh, so, but this come with the star wheels, 
I don't know. Uh, I know Chrysler would have called that style like a Magnum 500. I don't know, uh, you know, what uh, what GM called those. But but there you see it's got the 442 decal there on the fender. Uh, cartograph decal. So really, really nice. Really nice decals on there. We'll move around to the front here. There's again. Uh, now I did not, uh, I did not uh, paint these turn signals uh, to depict any. I just kind of left them chrome there uh, to like depict a turn signal. But that's just the way I did it in the time I did it. Makes sense, huh? Uh, and then again, I like this uh, separate uh, windshield wipers arms. Uh, looks nice that way when they do it like that. It gives it more realism. And then again, just down this side. And now the paint's not perfect on this because uh, I used a rattle can. I just had him put actual automotive paint, uh, the fast dry, in a rattle can. And the only problem with that is you can't, uh, it's like you can't regulate the the the, uh, the spray or the flow of the paint uh, like you can with an airbrush. Uh, so this was done from a rattle can, uh, although it was real automotive paint. Now it's hard to see the inside because it's going to, because of the black interior there, but got the white ball shifter down there. And I did go with the, uh, uh, obviously the bucket seats and console. That's the only option this kit has. Uh, now mine had the bench seat. Mine would have had the bench seat in there, uh, and the column shifter. Uh, it was, a uh, at a 330, uh, Jetfire V8, uh, with automatic transmission is what mine was. And this tire is going to fight me on the other side and wants to fall off. So you know what, for right now, I'm going to set them down there. So I don't want to lose it. And then just around the back, uh, you know, a uh, pretty big car, heavy car, but uh, these uh, these were pretty fast in their day with that package, guys. Uh, whatever engines they put in those, uh, 350 or I don't know, uh, I guess I didn't do a whole lot of research ahead of time. Uh, I don't know if these were available with a 455. I, I don't really know that. Uh, I just know mine had the 330 V8 and uh, it was a pretty stout runner in its own right. It had to uh four barrel carburetor on it and then there's that there's that engine oldsmobile 442 as i'm going to knock the camera over again uh just painted the engine up pretty much like i've seen in all the other pictures and my engine was gold in mine uh and so that's what i wanted to obviously depict in this uh as close as i could get to what mine was too uh regardless that this is a 442 that's kind of what i was going for as a replica of mine uh, power brakes there on this one, obviously, uh, they got power steering. Nice. They added all that stuff. Uh, very nice. Uh, got the alternator bracket there. Uh, so that made that, uh, much more realistic looking. And then the air intake hoses. Now, the only thing I had issue with on mine was getting this to fit right. Uh, so that I could put my hood on and set flat. Uh, so I kind of had to bend those, uh, just a little bit extra than, uh, than what they had them from the, from the kit. We'll go ahead and turn this upside down here. Take a look at the upside down side of it there. And uh, yeah, I built this in 2017 and then just uh, detailed the engine up there. Uh, I put a Fram filter on it. Uh, it's one of my favorite filters, so that's what ended up going on this. Uh, not the AC uh, filter, but uh, just, uh, just detailed the underside there. Uh, basic build, actually. And uh, now this. I ha the one problem I have with this car, guys, is the way they did the door handles for the doors here. Uh, look at that. Uh, this handle is not near long enough. Uh, you could probably only get two fingers in there if that was a real car. Uh, so very, very uh, out of scale on that. And I can't remember. I come up. I come across some of these uh, earlier some different door handles that I think would actually fit really nice on here. So it may be a thing if I come across those again, I might replace these with those other door handles because I think they'd be a lot more realistic looking on that. So, but anyway, just a uh, nice looking car, guys. I always liked, I always liked that. Uh, and uh, interesting story. Here's one of my stories. You know, I like to tell stories. So I'm going to tell one about this one because uh, I did drive that car for quite a bit. Uh, so the deal with that was, uh, my dad had seen uptown, there was a, there was a guy, uh, on the, on the West side of town, he used to sell, uh, he had a bunch of tires and wheels, uh, like aluminum slots and stuff, a heat set and just, 
he'd have cars out there every now and again and uh and just a just a bunch of stuff he would sell well he had this car sitting on his lot at one point in time and uh we had stopped and looked at it and like man that's a pretty nice car you know it's not you know the body wasn't terrible on it uh, it had some issues with it you know but it was a, a pretty solid car the floor was pretty solid in it and uh, uh so uh we decided we'd pursue it further so dad stopped and checked it out uh said it seemed to run really good and uh, but it had a busted windshield in it uh when we first looked at it so uh dad made a deal with the guy i think i was still at school but he made a deal with the guy uh give uh 400 bucks for that car and uh there was a, a glass shop right around the right around this corner so dad picked that up and he took it around the corner and had a new windshield put in it right away and uh had the old drum brakes all the way around and he he drove that thing home with virtually close to no brakes but he made it home uh with that and then we did uh, we did the brakes on it all the way around and uh, manual brakes. So it had it did have power steering, uh, but it had manual brakes on it. So I drove it that way for just a little bit, and we decided uh, to go ahead and do a disc, uh, power brake conversion on it. So we went and got us a power booster and everything, and we got that thing all done. And Dad told me when we he let me drive it first, he said now it's going to be a lot different. So be easy when you push on the brakes because you used to be I used to stand on them on those manual brakes. We got out in the street with that thing, man. I hit that brakes the first time about put us both through the windshield. So that was a that was a memorable moment in that car. So it was uh, had a lot of fun in that. Uh took it quite a few places. Uh we used to take that fishing, uh that big old trunk. We threw the we'd uh throw the uh, gear at the back and everything and take off to the lake. And I uh, had to put a gas tank in it. And a friend of ours had a four-door cutlass uh, that had a, he had a good tank in that. So we went out there and got that gas tank and uh, just replaced the gas tank. But pretty much other than that, uh, I, I uh, just drove it. And then I got this crazy, goofy, weird, strange idea that I liked the 73 Charger that was in town a little bit better. Uh, although it was by far a much worse shaped car. Uh, so... Thought I liked it better and come to find out should have just kept the cutlass. But you know how we are when we're young, guys. We do things like that and uh, uh, we kick ourselves after it's all over with. So, uh, But outside of that, uh, that's pretty much the story uh, I've got on the 67 cutlass. Uh, like I said, nothing nothing special. No custom work on this one. Uh, just pretty much a right out of the box. And if I remember right, guys... These were chrome, these were actually plastic chrome pieces, so none of this is bare metal foil here. I think I did some, these are up around the windows, was I uh, used bare metal foil on those and uh, things around the windshield and such. I think this was an insert back here. This is a chrome insert for the back window. Little tricky getting that one. I'll say if there was an issue I had with a fitment, it would be this piece back here. But uh, but overall, guys, you know, there's your dual exhaust there. Uh, but like I said, overall, Overall, a really, really nice kit. Uh, it was a good kit to build. Uh, everything seemed to go, I say, with the exception of that back window. We'll just get them spinning around here for you again. With the exception of the back, that back window uh, molding, uh, everything went together really, really nice on that. Uh, I would, uh, I would actually highly recommend this as a kit. Um, I don't know if, if they, I don't think they have them on uh, in the current catalogs right now. I could be mistaken. I think AMT might have one and actually might be this kit honestly to tell you the truth uh so maybe it is available still under the amt label uh but uh, guys if you get a chance uh and you haven't built one of these uh very nice kit you can see it builds up nice and uh, goes together pretty slick so uh and it's uh, you know it just uh, represents uh one of the old uh old basically muscle car in its own right uh and even like i said even the standard cutlass uh with that 330 uh it was a pretty stout engine and it uh it it, it could get up and go and it's on its own too so uh but anyway uh just represents a cool piece of automotive history uh the stuff's getting harder to find in in the in the one-to-one -one stuff and uh just if you can get one guys and uh throw it together having a nice shelf sitter uh like i said i would like to see him have redone those door handles. And I don't know if they're done on the re-releases. I doubt it, but it uh, would have been nice to see a more realistic looking door handle. But 
as far as that goes, that's my only beef on this kit. So, uh, guys, that's all I got for this one. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. I uh, hope you made it this far in the video. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you, subscribers. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, uh, numbers keep going up, and I so very much appreciate it. You guys are why I keep doing what I do, uh, and I'm having a I'm having a ball doing it. So uh, with that, guys, I guess I don't have much else to say on that. Uh, so until next Saturday Spotlight, this is Eric from Eric's Model Garage. You guys have a great day. God bless you, and happy modeling.